Now he's a Yahagi, Professor Yahagi. He's professor of medicine um, and director of the Division of Research and Development for Minimally Invasive Treatment at the Cancer Center of the Keio University. And we know Professor um, Yahagi as the pioneer of ESD technique. He developed a lot of uh, devices. He um, attended a lot of meetings. He has a lot of scientific um, papers. He is always a good friend helping us with difficult cases. And I remember one time at a dinner in Zurich, he told me ESD in the duodenum is the most craziest procedure. And that's why um, I'm looking very forward to his pre presentation for his craziest procedure of ESD in the duodenum. Please now, Isa. Thank you, my friend Stefan, for your kind of introduction. Still, I'm thinking that duodenal ESD is the most crazy procedure within the uh, endoscopy world. But somebody should uh, perform such kind of a crazy procedure in order to change the current situation. Uh, could you start my presentation, please? Thank you very much for inviting me to this session. I would like to talk about current situation of duodenal ESD in Asia. This is my COI disclosure. According to the published data from GK University Group, the incidence of duodenal tumors are drastically uh, increasing in recent days, although we don't know the reason yet. Because of the small number of advanced cancer cases in the duodenum, duodenal region seemed mostly benign. This is such a case, taken by FC debuted low-grade adenoma, therefore clinical course was followed. Uh, one year later, uh, the size is getting a little bit bigger, but looks like nearly the same. But surprisingly, uh, within three years, uh, it became uh, advanced cancer, which metastasized to lymph node and also liver. We investigated relationship between size and malignant potential, and we found that as the lesion size getting bigger, malignant potential also getting higher. And when the lesion size becomes much bigger than 13 mm, the malignant potential uh, getting higher, therefore we should remove those kind of bigger lesion completely in an unblocked fashion. Regarding the treatment option, we should select the appropriate one according to the uh, character of the target lesion. For the small sized lesions, uh, cold forcept pulpectomy or cold snare pulpectomy is usually good enough. And for the middle sized lesion less than 2 cm, usually underwater EMR is uh, good enough even uh, for the lesion with some fibrosis. But for the bigger lesion more than 2 cm, usually ESD is necessary to achieve reliable unblocked resection. And the current situation of duodenal ESD in Asia is still uh, controversial, and most of the treatment results were published by Japanese colleagues, and only very limited case series were reported from uh, Korea and China. But recently, we conducted large-scale multi-center retrospective analysis uh, within our uh, Japanese uh, study group. We established a study group for endoscopic diagnosis and treatment of superficial duodenal tumors sponsored by JGES and accumulated more than 3,000 uh, duodenal resected cases from 18 high-volume Japanese center including 1,017 ESD cases during past 10 years. And we already analyzed those data and already submitted our data to a major journal. Hopefully it will be accepted soon. Among the accumulated data, more than one third of the DNR ESD cases were from our institution. Uh, therefore, I would like to show you our treatment result. 
Uh, we already accumulated more than 1,000 duodenal cases during the past 10 years and conducted uh, 464 duodenal ESD at our institution, including 20 cases of SDIP, which is ESD including uh, papilla. This is our treatment results. We achieved more than 98% of unblocked resection rate and achieved more than 83% of curative resection rate, which is very good even comparing with other part of GI tract. But unfortunately, complication rate is still very high, which is 3.2% of delayed bleeding rate and 8.8% of immediate perforation and 0.9% of delayed perforation. But comparing with previous data, our complication rate uh, drastically improved because of introduction of our new techniques. We recently developed new ESD technique which is water pressure method. In this technique, we attach ST food and actively using a flushed normal saline through the endoscope to open the submucosa space. By using active pressure of water irrigation, uh, we can easily open the submucosa space. As a result, we can easily conduct submucosa dissection without having any serious complication. And the complete resection of the tumor, we usually close the large defect using string clip suturing method. After introducing line attached end clip, we anchor it on the both side. Then prepare the third end clip just beside the uh, previous end clip, then pull back the string to approximate the large opening. It becomes relatively easy to capture the um, causal edge on the both side. Again, introducing the additional end clip, carefully open it and hook the proximal side, then pull back the string uh, to uh, come close the other side of the causal edge and carefully catch the both edge of the mucosa and uh, firmly uh, close the end clip. After complete closure of the large defect on the right side, I cut the line using scissors forceps, then introduce additional uh, clip and line on the left side, then again uh, prepare the additional end clip to approximate the large opening. After Pulling back the string, I could easily capture the large opening with the additional end clip. Then, uh, with the same way, uh, introducing the additional end clip, then close the uh, end clip by capturing both edge of the mucosal edge. In this way, uh, we could close the large opening of the mucosal defect after the 8 cm resection. Well, the, by using those techniques, we can remove this kind of extremely large region in the duodenum. This large region was located at the second part of the duodenum, very close to the major papilla. And we checked the barium x-ray and found that there was a strong deformity of the duodenal lumen. Uh, therefore, previous doctor judged this was already become advanced cancer. But surprisingly, all the taken biopsy from this target lesion was all benign. We also found the softness of the uh, hold convergence uh, coming to the very uh, big lesion. Uh, therefore, we decided to perform ESD also in this case under intubated general anesthesia. Initially, we injected a relatively large amount of glycerol solution to the anal side, then quickly start the initial mucosal incision at the anal side. Then uh, continue mucosal incision also from the oral side and connected the incision line to the back side. Right after initial mucosal incision, I opened the submucosal space utilizing the water pressure method. 
it was quite effective uh, to open the submucosal space uh, then uh, we could continue the uh, safe submucosal initial dissection at the anal side Unfortunately, there was lots of bubble after the submucosal dissection, therefore I flushed the uh, uh, saline again and again in order to flush away the bubbles. Then pull back the endoscope to the oral side and uh, restart the mucosal incision also from oral side. After making certain amount of uh, mucosal incision at the oral side, I injected additional uh, submucosal fluid cushion directly to the submucosal layer, then quickly start the submucosal dissection from the oral side. Uh, it was quite easy to open the submucosal uh, space because of the high uh, water pressure, then quickly start the submucosal dissection. Unfortunately, maneuverability of the endoscope was relatively poor b because of the undulation of the duodenum, and the, there was a tiny bleeding coming from the uh, sick blood vessel. Then applied cross tip of dual knife to uh, coagulate the bleeding point. After the hemostasis, I continued the submucosal dissection and dissected the uh, surrounding. Uh, tissue uh, above the muscle layer. I carefully controlled the direction of the endoscope and opened the submucosal space utilizing the water pressure method, hooking the uh, edge of the oral side and carefully conducted the submucosal dissection to open the submucosal space at the oral side. Now we can see the blue colored submucosal layer colored by uh, indigo carmine. Uh, carefully dissected the submucosal layer, I recognized that the muscle layer itself uh, was bended. Uh, because of this uh, muscle deformity, it looks, looked like uh, advanced cancer, but uh, it was a uh, long in impression uh, because most of the uh, dissected area was quite soft. Therefore, I decided to continue the uh, uh, procedure until the end of the uh, ESD. Uh, completing mucosal incision at the oral side, I quickly started the submucosal dissection from the oral side. By uh, flushing the uh, normal cell line through the endoscope, I could easily open the submucosal space. As a result, following submucosal dissection becomes quite easy and safer. By direct uh, visualization of the submucosal tissue, I could easily capture the target tissue uh, with the tip of the dual knife. Sometimes approach uh, becomes perpendicular, but still it was po possible to do safe submucosal dissection by visualizing remaining submucosal tissue by injecting additional submucosal fluid cushion directly to the remaining submucosal tissue. Now I'm hooking the remaining uh, tissue with the tip of the dual knife and cut, cutting the remaining uh, tissue. This is the last uh, step and finally complete unbroken resection was achieved. Then started uh, closure of the large defect using string uh, line uh, uh, string clip suturing method which I already explained you uh, before uh, showing this video clip. Uh, by uh, pulling back the string, I can easily approximate the large opening. As a result, I, I can close the defect using additional en end clip. Carefully uh, catch the proximal edge of the surrounding mucosa, then pulling back the string to uh, uh, pull back the mucosal edge of the other side, then capture the both sides uh, using end clip, then cut the line using scissors horse forceps, then introduce the second line uh, to the left side, and prepare the third end clip uh, just beside the uh, end clip, then pull back the line to approximate the large opening and capture the both edge of the mucosa. Now, a uh, uh, large opening uh, was nicely captured and uh, additional end clip uh, also 
capture the other side as a result large opening becomes uh, much smaller and finally uh, complete closure was achieved in this particular case and this was a resected specimen and it was very large more than 8 cm resected specimen and fortunately this was just a benign lesion although the lesion size was quite big and surprisingly uh, clinical course was quite good uh, this patient discharged from the hospital uh, three days after the treatment this was the beauty of the well uh, this is more challenging case because uh, this large region was including major papilla and also taken biopsy already revealed adenocarcinoma but fortunately there was no invasive sign what will you do in this situation we decided to perform SDIP, which is ESD including papilla. Basically, we removed the target lesion using water uh, pressure method by dissecting surround tissue around the major papilla, then cut through the major papilla using dual knife J. It was nicely removed, and then uh, we introduced introduced transnasal drainage tube to pancreatic duct as well as bile duct. Uh, this is the uh, final view of the resection. Uh, we can see sphincter muscle uh, on the left side and there was no perforation, no severe bleeding. And the clinical result was quite good. Uh, uh, it was just a um, causal cancer without having a vascular infiltration, therefore we achieved curative resection although the region size was nearly 6 cm in the greatest diameter. And the clinical course was quite favorable, uh, there was no severe complication after the treatment and 5 days later we removed the transnasal drainage tube and discharged this patient from the hospital. And six months later, we checked the resected area and it was completely healed. Well, this is my conclusions, ladies and gentlemen. Treatment options should be selected according to tumor character. And number of duodenal ESD is still very limited even in Asian countries. And reasonable clinical outcome was obtained by water pressure method and string clip suturing method. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naoisa, for this stunning presentation. I think um, we three will never get to this perfection level, but um, the information you gave us with this water pressure method and also with um, the technique um, to close um, the large defect in the duodenum are very um, important to us. My question is, um, what kind of endoscope do you use in the uh, duodenum? Um, sometimes when I perform my EMR in the duodenum, I like to use the colonoscope. In the ESD procedure, you use gastroscope or colonoscope in such lesions? I usually use gastroscope, but the feature uh, has 3.2 millimeter working channel uh, because we introduce uh, end clip together with line when we perform a uh, string uh, clip suturing method. Therefore, it is necessary to have large uh, working channel. Uh, therefore, I prefer to use Olympus uh, T-scope uh, for all the uh, do dinner ESD procedure. Only a uh, very limited case, which a uh, large tumor located at the third part of the duodenum, I sometimes use pediatric colonoscope, but mostly I can remove uh, duodenal tumor using a uh, therapeutic gastroscope. Mm -hmm. And another question I have with regard to the hemostasis, I never saw you in your videos now using the coag grasper. So what is your strategy in the um, duodenum? Because from my EMR experience, I'm also always very afraid to use coagulation in the um, duodenum. Uh, yes, coagulation in the duodenum is sometimes really risky because uh, majority of sick blood vessel penetrating through the 
uh, very thin mass layer doesn't have enough support of the mass layer. Soon after coagulation of thick blood vessel, sometimes it caused perforation. Therefore, I usually carefully dissected the sur surrounding tissue, then apply the tip of the uh, dual knife, then use a very low setting forced coag, which you already mentioned during your talk. I prefer to use uh, Bio3 and using a post 0 0.3 uh, for abrasion of sick blood vessel. Then we can uh, cut through the sick blood vessel without having actual bleeding. And in case of having minor bleeding from the tiny uh, blood vessel, I can use a uh, close tip of dual knife uh, using uh, spray coag 1.2, then we can achieve reliable hemostasis. We don't have to use coag raspar. Only the case which uh, we caused uh, really uh, active, uh, strong bleeding, uh, I sometimes use coag raspar, but majority of the minor bleeding, I can easily uh, stop it by using cross tip of the airline. Mm -hmm. now, is um, a, can I make a question? Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, and um, just to make a link between the two lectures, first of all, of course, congratulations. We know um, <laughs> your skills and also your uh, vision. Um, do you do you advise also to use any traction? Because uh, again, the same question uh, we are used to use and perform EST, of course, always pushing and and having some traction with the devices in the tip of the scope, but. Now we are moving to some sort of uh, other sorts of traction. Do you use also any traction? It, would, you know, it should be difficult for sure. Yeah, uh, because of the complicated uh, anatomical structure of duodenum, I hesitate to use the traction device. But the, uh, basically, uh, water pressure method is kind of natural traction. Uh, because we can use uh, water pressure, active water pressure, which we can push the dissected area using uh, uh, power of water, then we can directly approach to the deep submucosal layer. That, that is kind of uh, natural traction. And also uh, tip of the ST food works very well to stabilize the uh, movement of the uh, endoscope. That, that is usually good enough. Only very uh, complicated case, uh, I sometimes use line and clip traction uh, for the duodenal region, but sometimes it doesn't work well because of the undulation of the duodenum. That okay. is the reality. And one, one last question, if, if I'm allowed. You mentioned size as something that would lead you to make an ESC or to perform an ESD. But of course, there are other features. Um, that for our community that is listening to us, anything that may well preclude or it's it becomes in unnecessary to do ESD, any anything that you even you would send to surgery, or on the on the other side, any fixture that even you would go for piecemeal mucosectomy. Uh, usually, uh, we don't perform ESD in case of having big circumferential uh, duodenal tumor because after, even after complete successful resection, severe structure must be occurred and we cannot control the severe structure formation. Uh, only the case less than five centimeter longitudinal lens, uh, I can still perform circumferential resection because I can completely suture uh, the large defect uh, for five centimeter. But if the region size much bigger than five centimeter uh, uh, for the circumferential uh, big region, I usually send our patient to surgery. And also the small region less than two centimeter, we don't have to perform uh, ESD, even if the region has some uh, fibrosis caused by previous biopsy or uh, caused by previous partial endoscopic resection because underwater uh, EMR works very well. Uh, I have very, uh, now he said, I have very short question uh, to you. Should we try to suture each mucosal defect after duodenal ESD for prevention of delayed perforation? Ah, yes, that, that's very important question. Uh, comparing with other part of GI tract, 
complication rate is extremely high in the duodenum. Actually, we did, didn't cross uh, mucosal defect after the small resection in the past. Uh, then we had uh, very uh, high uh, incidence of uh, delayed bleeding, not delayed perforation. But uh, of course, we experienced the two cases of uh, delayed perforation. Uh, therefore, we decided to, to close all the mucosal defect, even for the small size. Uh, but uh, we don't have to close the mucosal defect after cold uh, snare polypectomy. Only the case which utilize the electrocautery, uh, we usually close the defect. Thank you.